Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and truly, we should be glad and thankful in it. Good morning to all of the people of the Most High God, to all of my kings and queens out there. Hallelujah to all of the kingdom lifers, to all of my partners out there, supporters, and to all of my colleagues, and to every visitor that is here today. We are so thankful that you are in the house of the Lord. We say, come on in. Hallelujah. You are welcomed in this place. Come on in and sit <clears throat> and with expectation and anticipation of what the Lord has to say to us today. For we understand one principal truth, and that is one word, one phrase, one sentence from the Lord is enough to speak to your spirit man, to bring it from death to life, to cause you to have a resurrection in any area of your life that seems to be dead today. So come on in, it is time for us to experience a love encounter with the Lord. And so if you have not been told this week or you have not been feeling loved by human beings or mankind or family or friends or, or whoever, and you have not even ever been told by anyone that they love you, I want you to know from God's heart through my vocal cords to you today that I love you and more importantly that the Lord loves you today. Hallelujah. He loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son according to John 3, 16 so that whosoever believe in him, trust in him, accept him, uh, should not perish but have eternal life. And that's the love of the Father. The Father loved us so much that he himself could not come to this earth because of the death of his holiness, because of the death of him being so great. He literally will, I believe, burn up this earth. So he could not come here because of his deity and because of his holiness. But he loved us so to find a way to send himself here, hallelujah, to present himself to mankind once again after Adam sinned and lost that eternal fellowship that we had with God. That wasn't enough for him. His love surpassed all of the mistakes. It, it went past looking at what Adam did and found a way to bring us back into the right standing with him. And that's why during Christmas, that song we sing so lightly, O come Emmanuel, that word Emmanuel is being interpreted as found in Isaiah, God with us. So, and he sent the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is right here, right now. He's in this room, you all. He's in this church right now. He's in this service right now. He's in your house right now. Open the door and let him in and invite him to come in and do what he do best. And he will come and make everything and put everything in order. He will be your assistant in whatever way you need assistant. He will be your standby and your helper. So I want you to know that you are loved. So don't ever say you have never heard that. You are loved. And although I may not know you, I cannot see you through this, this screen. God knows you and he knows who you are listening. Sent you right here today because he knew you needed to hear those words. So I want you to know you are loved today. So welcome to all of you, to all of the kingdom lifers, and once again, to all of my partners and all of those who support this ministry in whatever way that you do through prayer, through your monetary gifts. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And to all of my friends of this ministry, we thank God for you. And for those of you who may be here for the very first time, by way of introduction, my name is Pastor Betty. I am senior pastor and founder of this very great church that is virtual right now. 
uh, but our location is on the northwest side of Chicago, Illinois. So if you are in another state, hallelujah, we thank God for you stopping by here today and hope that you stay with us today through the entirety of this service, for we do have a life-giving word to deliver to you today. It is part two of the series of, of it wasn't a series, but we knew that we had to turn it into a series in order for me to give you all of the content that the Holy Spirit downloaded and gave to me to give to you, to serve to you. So I am your waiter, waitress today. And the Holy Spirit is going to help me, hallelujah, today to serve your needs today. And it's going to come through the word of God. If we are led we were going to sing praise and worship some. We don't know how that's going to go, but we're just going to let the Holy Spirit have its way today. So rise, people of God, and shine today. Yes, I said it. You are designed to shine. You know, I love the Christmas seasons because in the Christmas season, I love the lights because why God is light, I am light. I am the light of the world and I don't like darkness at all and there's no darkness in him. So I love the light. And so I'm saying today, you are a light. So rise, come on, get up, rise. If you're laying down in defeat, if you are leveled to the ground, if you've been uh, served a blow by the enemy and you're on the spiritual boxing ring mat, um, mat and floor, and you laying there, the Holy Spirit, who is your referee, and Pastor Betty joining the Holy Spirit in, in the physical form, telling you, get up now in the name of the Lord Jesus and shine like the star you are, like the diamond that you are, like the precious gem that you are, uh, the scriptures over in the book of, I believe is in Joel, he said that they shall be mine, said the Lord, in that last day when I come to make up my jewels. You are precious as a jewel. So get up from there. Hallelujah. Diamonds, they take, they said they take a lick and they keep on going. Why? They're genuine. Because they are made like that. They said diamonds can even, I believe, cut glass. So Jim, that you are, light that you are. Get up, rise and shine today. Push through it all in the midst of it all, in spite of it all. And let's give the God that can do something about your situation. Let's give him some praise today. Are you ready? Come on, raise your hand right now. Say, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God, today. We give you honor. You are worthy and worthy to be praised. And we will come out of ourselves. We will come out of discouragement. We will come out of that low place. And we will rise to our feet today, singing worship to you, giving praise to you, listening at your word so that we can give Get a, another dose, hallelujah, uh, of your word and encouragement and, and empowerment so that we can go on and do what we need to do. And so we can prove the devil out to be what he is. And that is a lie. <laughs> Glory to God. For as Isaiah 61 said, it is a good thing to give praises unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It is pleasant and praise. It looks good on y'all. That frown don't look good on you. Those tears don't look good on you. Even though we know we all arrive at that place sometime, it don't look good on us. Praise is coming. Joy and triumphing and striving and, I mean, and thriving, I'm sorry, looks good on you because you are designed to be a conqueror. You are designed to take dominion. You are designed, hallelujah, to face that giant, not just face him. You are designed to defeat him. Glory be to God. So we are thankful. Let God arise. Let him arise in you and let your enemies be scattered according to Psalms 147 and 1. And so we thank God for Kingdom Life Christian Center, those who currently even some of the former ones, we're calling you back and even to those in the future, we thank God for you. This is a warm place of welcome. Hallelujah. For those of you who visit for the very first time, anytime you want to come back and visit Kingdom Life Christian Center, whether we are virtual here or even when we um, 
are on site, we want you to know that you have a warm seat of welcome that will always be awaiting just you. So we invite you to the house of the Lord where you can experience the presence of the Lord and, and experience a love encounter with him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we are thankful uh, uh, for you and uh, we are just going to continue on in the service of today. We are coming up on Thanksgiving. Glory be to God. And everybody's in anticipation. They're in the shopping uh, mood right now and, and uh, planning, hallelujah, their dinner and, and getting those recipes together. And everybody is almost uh, salivating, uh, anticipating that good food. Well, I hope you're doing that today for this spiritual food. Hallelujah. We shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. For Jesus is the living bread. So Pastor Betty has spent time in the kitchen. Naturally speaking, y'all, Pastor Betty don't like the kitchen. Y'all know that. All those who know me, I don't like the kitchen. I, but here's the misconception. People think because I don't like the kitchen, I can't cook. I can cook. I, I inherited, most of us inherited from my mother. She was a good cook. I just don't like it. Glory be to God. And when I don't like it, it's toil to me. It takes me longer in the kitchen. So, but when it comes to the spirit, hallelujah, I'm ready. I'm ready to feed y'all. I'm ready to feed you till you ain't got no more room left. And I, I'm asking you, do you want some dessert? <laughs> so let us go into a word of prayer and then into the scripture and then we'll move forward. Dear gracious Lord, hallelujah, the one who is ranked supreme over all, the one who there is nothing that exists that can compare to you, to the eternal God, to the only wise God, our Savior, the immortal, invisible God, hallelujah, the one who is too holy to be named. And when Moses asked, who shall I said sent me? Who shall I tell the people who sent me? And you just said, tell them that I am that I am. Thank you for who you are, God. We don't know you in, in fullness, but we know one thing that you're good, that you're holy, that you're sovereign, that you're merciful, that you are just and true, full of everything that is pure, honest, and of a good report. We thank you for serving a God who is a God that can live inside of the ones who worship that God. God, we bless you. You're not far away from us, but you are near to all those who call upon your name. God, today, before we ask for anything, petition you for our own needs and then for the needs of others and intercede for the needs of others. We would dare not do it without giving you first honor and praise and worship for what you've done already. Hallelujah. And the, as the song said, if you never do another thing, you've done enough. But God, we thank you that we still are asking and have needs here while we are living in this natural earth and in these natural bodies. And we thank you that you said when we call on you and if we ask, we can we will receive. God, we thank you for so thinking about everything. And never, we never will and never have been a person in this earth that can think of everything without leaving anything undone in, in regard to the service uh, and to the needs of mankind but you were you are that god and we thank you for it. god we, you we you even see our very end from the beginning you know what's going to happen 2 weeks from now 2 years from now 20 years from now you know our uprising and our down city and you take notice of it god and you are on the side of those that are righteous and you are caring about those who are yours who are sons of yours to as many as receive you to them gave you you gave us the power and authority to be called the sons of god now jesus has become 
um, the first among many brethren. He was your only begotten and he made us an heir of you, God, and then now a joint heir with him. And we share in everything. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Even when we can't trace what you're doing now, when we don't understand what you're doing now, even when it hurts and we are crying tears because of, of the the, the things that are occurring in our lives, hallelujah, that we don't quite understand. It seems that we're doing all the right things and we are saying the right things and we're thinking the right things, but what's happening in our lives don't seem to even line up with your word. But God, help your people today, hallelujah, to not lose their hope and their audacity to hope in you, to believe that your word will come through for them in their patience. If they wait on you, you will work all things out for the good of them who love you and are called according to your purpose. And God, we let them know, hallelujah, give them that assurance today that they're trusting in you that your word said that they do, that you will never let them be ashamed. That means you will not leave them out there hanging so that they will be ashamed. Hallelujah. Uh, when people say, I told you about that faith, but you will never let them be put to shame when they trust in you will always come through. Help them to hold out. Help them to stand until their change comes. Let them know that this too is a test because what they're dealing with, God, it is rough. It is rough. It's some things that they, some people have not even dealt with these types of things ever before in their lives, but they got what it takes. Rise up the enabler in them and let them know as a child of God, they got every tool necessary. There is nothing left to be created for their victory. They already have everything left. Help them to examine their tool chest. Help them to examine that belt of truth that they have around their waist that you told them to gird themselves with the belt of truth. And that truth is in your word and help them to reach for those tools when it seems hard, when it seems difficult. And we thank you for doing it. Now we thank you for God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your presence here in this earth that is left for mankind. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, I invoke your presence in this place. I invoke your presence in the in the homes and in the spaces of all of my partners where they are, wherever they are located and listening at this broadcast today. Go where they, now you don't have to go. You're already there. Where they are, uh, bring a, uh, uh, a refreshment that they are in need of desperately in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring the answers, Holy Spirit, that is in you. Bring all things, and court, uh, as even your word, to their remembrance when they are about to faint and give up. Uh, touch them where they we Give them fresh oil, I decree today, and new wine for every person listening today. I apply the blood of Jesus to Kingdom Life members and to all of my partners and supporters in the name of the Lord Jesus and to all those visitors who are listening today. Be thou glorified, God, and we pray that there will be testimonies of deliverance that will come after this service because they will be healed of every single ailment, every single heartache, and every single pain, and they're going to be healed by your word in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we speak physical healing to every person who is dealing with ailments in their body. Be thou healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. We speak emotional healing. People who are, are, are infirm in their emotions is on a roller coaster ride. One minute they're happy and the very next minute they're depressed. Hallelujah. They get up crying and don't know why. God heal the emotional scars in their lives. Even help them, hallelujah, to to forget the pain of it. They do have a memory bank and they will remember what happened, but they won't remember the pain of it. Take the pain away, Lord God. Even some childhood hurts that have not been healed yet. I speak the healing power of God over those emotional scars and I apply the anointing oil. Hallelujah. Glory be to God on that wound. And I 
I'm wrapping it in gauze and binding up that wound. And I'm speaking the healing power of God into your life today. Receive that wound healing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, going back to generations. God, we thank you, Holy Spirit. Now we ask that you do what you do best and send deliverance and healing in the, the mind, mind healing, God. Give them good mental health. Return that soundness to their mind today. Give them the mind of Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on all of these people now and fall afresh on me. Think through my mind, speak through my lips with power, uh, with might, and with authority. Hallelujah. We come against the demonic foes that come against this word that is preached them. Now open up the ears, hallelujah, of the listeners that they will not just be hearers, but only, but be doers of your word so that this word can now start to be manifest in the life of the believer so the world can stand up and take notice of the God that we serve and how big this God is and will be provoked to jealousy to turn their lives over to you. Now we thank you that you are here. Your presence is here. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We, we speak Hallelujah, a global refreshing over the people of God and to those who are righteous. Hallelujah, and let the enemy be scattered. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and let God arise and let him arise in us. Now this service is blessed. It is so every single need that is needed will be met in this preach word or whatever goes on that they receive their blessing today. And they are empowered and equipped for a whole nother week, month, and a whole nother year. And they will finish this year strong. This we pray, this we believe, this we receive, and this we call it done. Hallelujah. And if you believe that, hallelujah, you are anticipating that, come on, seal it with an amen. And what does amen? So be it, and so it is. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we thank God for all of you. Very uh, quickly here, we're going to ask you to turn your attention to um, Psalms 125. Psalms 125. Hallelujah. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot, cannot be moved, but abide forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. So don't be fretting, y'all, because of all of your enemies and all of the wicked people. It won't rest upon you, the scripture says. Lest the righteous put forth their hands in unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, to those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto their quicker ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace, but peace shall be upon Israel. And we do also pray that today for the peace of Israel. Hallelujah, God, you know all that's happening. You know that part of this is prophetic. And you know the outcome and you know who is righteous. We ask therefore the the um the saving of innocent lives, hallelujah, of mankind. Glory be to God, those who are crying out to you. God, we pray for the peace of Israel. Let it be done sooner than later in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring a resolve to this. Only you can do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There is nobody that is greater. All you have to do is speak the word or say the word. and It's over. Glory be to God. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. It is so and so it is. Hallelujah. So we are in part two. Hallelujah. Just come on. Raise your hand real quick before I get started. Raise your hand. Talk to your father. Talk to him. Tell him what it is that you need today. Tell them what it is that you've been praying for. Tell them what it is that's troubling you. He cares about that. Cast your cares on the Lord. 
for it is him that is caring for you. But when you cast it like a fisherman, don't hold on to the fisher rod and don't start reeling back, back it back in. It's just if you cast your line and cast your cares on him, don't take it back. Let him handle it. Glory be to God. What it is, speak to your father. Talk to him right now. Come on, lift up your hand. Say, talk to your father like you're talking to uh, of the person that's in that room with you. Hallelujah. He's listening. You got his attention. Talk to him. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. Hallelujah. He's ready and willing. Amen and amen. So we thank God for our lesson today. And we've been talking about um, keys. You've been given keys. Now use your keys. Use your keys. Last week, focus, we talked about the frustration of losing keys and the stress and the anxiety that comes when we lose our keys. Why? Because keys are instruments, little metal things, little bitty things that doesn't look important. We showed your key last week. That little metal thing could cause somebody to lose sleep. Why? Because most things that are behind locked doors or locked places are things that are of value. There are things that people worked hard for. There are things that is important to someone that they don't want still stolen. It is things that is part of a person's inheritance. It may be things that are of value. So what do we do? We put it behind locked doors and we keep it. We keep it behind locked doors because we don't want the thief to come in to, and to steal. Hallelujah, glory be to God. So we talked about also the things that keys symbolizes. So we'll give you that brief up, update real quick and then we'll continue to move on. So when we're talking about keys, we, we said key is a little metal piece, hallelujah, glory be to God, that uh, instrument that is specifically cut. It's specifically cut. So my key don't fit your, your locks and your, your keys don't fit my life because each Tumbler. The locks may look the same. You may purchase them from the same store, but inside of each lock, they're supposed to make these locks unique. Now we do know that they mass produce, and sometimes some keys may open some of the same doors, but we would never know huh? you, unless you go up and down every every block in in every city and state and try to use those keys. But the point of it is, on a normal basis, locks are unique. They're specific to the person who has the keys and have bought that lock and put it on um, whatever they're locking up. And so that key is an instrument specifically cut into to fit into that lock so that when you turn it, that it causes the gears and, and whatever else is in there, the mechanics of it to move to the point that it takes it out of what we call the lock position into the unlock position. And when it does that, it controls the entrance or the access to that specific place or thing. It is, um, it gives you access, the act of approaching or entering into something. It is granting you admittance. It says you got the key, you are admitted. You are admitted into this place. Everybody who don't have a key can be uh, admitted or get, given interest into this place. Hallelujah. The place, normally these places and things are locked up because they are not accessible to the general public. These are private places, private things that have been stored up for Pacific people. So we talked about that as being keys. And we said that we have spiritual keys that we have been granted. And you could take what I just said on a natural way and apply it spiritually. The Lord, we read in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. So you go back to part one and get the foundations uh, if, if you don't understand what are we saying here. So the Lord had given us keys and we discussed that last week. And what spiritual keys are there? 
because there are hidden things when it comes to kingdom. Um, one scripture, let me see if I can find that scripture for you real quick. Uh, in Luke, in Luke chapter number uh, eight, starting at um, verse nine, Luke eight and nine. So it says, and his disciples asked him saying, what might this parable be? He had just told them a parable about um, the different types of seed and different ground that these seeds fell on. And we know Jesus taught uh, a lot of times in parables. And that means that these were um, um, spiritual truths that he was telling in story form in order to bring out a principle. And now we know also that these parables were spoken because it was intentional by Jesus because he wanted it to be only understood and known by those who he was training, his government, the 12 disciples, because that number 12 means the number of government. He wanted them to know. So let's read here. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? And he said, unto you. He's talked to his disciples. And if you look at verse 10, it's in the red. So when it's in the red, who's speaking? Jesus. He's speaking to his disciples. Unto you, it is given to know the mysteries. What, now, what is mysteries? Mysteries are those unveiled truths and secrets that are and, and parables and parallels that are not known by the masses or the majority. It is given you, to you to know the mysteries or the hidden truths. And it is given to you to know and to unveil things. Unveil, you know, just like the bride, when they have that veil over their face, when they need to uh, see what's underneath that veil, what do that groom do, pull that veil back. And so there are mysteries here in this earth. There are mysteries that is pertaining only to the kingdom that the world cannot see, neither can they understand. And it's not intended for them. It is intended for those who are his. You know, your children, you can... Uh, love kids in your neighborhood. You can love kids everywhere you go, but there is nobody that is going to come and take and have the privileges that your own children have. Even though you love those kids and you love people's kids, they still don't share. They shouldn't share the same rights and privileges that your children have because just by nature, of their heritage. So then he said, so they still have an inheritance or supposed to know things that the other children or have accessibility to things that your other children don't have. So he is saying to them, it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. So I'm speaking to them in parables giving them some little insight in, but the mysteries, the, uh, the unveiling of this truth is only for you. It's only for my children, okay? And so then let's read the next verse. It says, verse 11, let's read 10 again. And he said unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they may not understand. You may say, well, that's not nice of God. He don't want people to understand things. I'm just like I'm saying, they're not his kids. Number one, we, we told you in part number one that carnal minds cannot understand spiritual things anyway. So it's not given to them. No, this is the children's bread. You know, one part of the scripture, the lady is asking um, to be partaker and the Lord said it is not right for me to give the church's bread and give it to dogs and this sounds harsh that he was calling dogs but he means that you are not covenant people but uh, but I ain't gonna go into that story deeply but what, what it was saying there are certain things that is privy to those who are part of your family or to those 
who are related to you or to those who are your children. And in these, this spiritual case, these mysteries are not given unto those uh, others. He just speaks to them in parables, just throwing that truth out there to get the, it to be planted as a seed so that they can desire to know and want more. And then that's when uh, they come into the knowledge and when they accept him, then they understand. Okay, so now the parable is this, and then he goes on and gives them the parable of the sword and the seed. Okay, and so the seed is the word of God. So anyway, I bought that scripture out to let you know that keys, there are certain keys that people may look at you and wonder, how do you do that? Have you ever had people ask you, how did you get that job? How how did you get that a house with no down payment. How did you get that interest rate when that interest rate is a rate that was way back when? How did, did you get granted that loan? Or how did you um, uh, build that bridge with your mate and all of that mistrust? And, and it seems as if the the it should have been in divorce corporate. How, how did you all mend that relationship? How did you figure out how to deal with your difficult child. It's because you've got something that's supposed to be at a higher level than they have. And then you, they're supposed to be teachers. I'm talking about using your keys. And one part of using your keys, as we said last week, is knowledge, understanding, having the facts. Under and it's enough to have a lot of facts, but do nothing with it. But you, you, you gather the facts, you know the thing, but then you got to understand what you know. And then after uh, understanding comes wisdom and then wisdom come in and tell you what to do with that, that you know, and now that which you understand completely now execute it. Wisdom tells you how to do that. And so anyway, so keys, as I uh, was looking at this lesson and I was like, man, 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 man. This is really a what I thought was just a simple message. The Holy Spirit said, do you know how profound just that little thing you're talking about key is? To the point when we talked about Matthew 16 and 19 last week, he told Peter, what you have just proclaimed, what you have just understood, flesh and blood, your own intellect, your own philosophy, your own theories and your reasoning, and even your common sense did not reveal that to you. He said it had to be God the Father who revealed that truth to, to, to you, Peter. And that truth, what it wasn't what everybody else was saying who I am and who I relate to. I am the son of the living God. I am the Christ. And he said, and upon that rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And then he says, I'm giving you some keys. And what are these keys to? Not keys to the kingdom. Because we said, if you have keys to my house, you may have keys to the front door. But if you get in the front door and there are multiple doors in the uh, to the rooms in my house and every one of them is locked, you don't have full accessibility. But if I give you the keys of my house, that means you got every key to every lock in here. Hallelujah, glory to God. And, and if you do get that, hallelujah, that means I trust you, glory to God. So everybody don't, is not privy to that. So then we talked about keys are those things that locks up things. What do keys symbolize? Keys, they symbolize that there are things in locked places that are not open to just everyone at all times. Is open to just a special group. Key symbolizing having exclusive rights granted to gain entrance. Um, you know how they said, how did all those people get into the concert? Well, some of them snuck through the back door because uh, Pookie them gave them a free ticket. So the back door was open and they snuck through the back door. Even the Bible said in the end time, some people going to try to come in the back door and sneaking in. No, no, you got to come openly and come through the door like you're supposed to. And so keys represent um, having uh, exclusive rights granted to you to gain interest into a place. Um, it is something of value that is behind something that is locked up. 
key symbolizes a right or a privilege that gains full access that others do not have. A keys symbolizes admittance, we said that already, and also keys represent legacy and heritage. Glory to God, hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit said, what you're talking about is very crucial because this is what's basically wrong with my, my church, with my children today. They don't understand. Number one, they have, they if they understood, they forgotten. Somehow or another, the enemy has blinded their eyes and their ears and their mind to understand who they are in me. And we said about the eyes of your understanding <clears throat> and being enlightened so that you may know. So you may get those if that information and not just know it, but not know it and don't forget it. So that you can use it the next time you come up on hard time. But you got to know who your daddy is. You got to know who is in charge. You got to know the authority that comes behind being a, a, a king's kid. Hallelujah. You don't fall into the general uh, uh, status quo. You have special rights and privileges and certain things open up to you that ain't going to open up to anybody else just by the nature of who your father is. And that's who we serve. We serve in the God that nobody can say no to. Nobody can counsel him. Nobody can tell him, you can't do that for that person. You can't open that door for them because I don't, by the way, I don't care for that person. He cares less about what you think. When he opens what he wants to open for you and what he says for you is for you and it has your name on it, nobody can steal it. That's why I don't know why people get so jealous and clawing and fighting over a man or a woman. Glory be to God. If that person is for you, they ain't going nowhere. God will send them in your direction. And if you follow it, like the word says, if the man finds the wife do his job, he finds a good thing and he obtains favor. They forget that part. But then if the woman is a, a waiting to be a wife, she's doing and preparing to be that wife, not just his woman. Because it's different than just you marrying a man. Anybody could do that. Or you or him just marrying a woman. Anybody could do that. You could go out on the street tomorrow and, and, and get one. But if you want a wife and if you want a husband, if you want a woman of God and or a man of God, then you the man got to find them and you got to wait. And you got to be a wife in waiting. Have wife qualities. Have those things that you're building up. If you want to be that, call yourself that. And then not just call yourself that, but be doing things that makes you that person so that you could be presented. But anyway, so that was just a side nugget. But so anyway, we uh, are talking about these keys here. And as uh, doing my study and my attempt to unfold this principal truth about uh, this important, wonderful privilege that has been granted to every single believer, I find that I am just touching the surface of what these keys really represent and what they open. Glory be to God. And as the scriptures and the Holy Spirit told me, there is a profoundness to this thing called kingdom keys. Hallelujah. And we are going, I'm going to try to take my time so this can marinate with you all and so that it can go way down in your spirit and it won't be on the surface to be plucked up by the enemy and you won't keep soon forgetting every time you fall into a challenging situation or a challenging time. Glory be to God. And so, so as he said that, so we last week we focused on on the frustration when losing keys because we know that if we lost keys to either our car or either to our home, we know that there are valuable things in our home, our TVs, our electronics, our our, our tablets and our furniture and money may be in the house and, and everything that we worked hard for. How many people say, well, huh? That ain't that important to have accessible to. Yeah, anything of value is this lot. Why? Because if you leave it open, it's subject to the thief just walking on in, taking what they want, what you have a right to. 
And so we focused on that part of the frustration. People even lose sleep when they lose the keys. I lost keys a couple of times, but it makes me more astute. It makes me more uh, attentive to my keys. Now, in my lifetime, I believe I lost my keys maybe twice, twice, because the feeling that I have to go get the keys and then you don't know where those keys are. We talked about that last week, so go back. So today I want to focus and talk a little bit more, not about the frustration of losing the keys and all that. And I want to focus more on having the possession of these keys and focusing on what we're supposed to be doing to use these keys and to utilize these keys. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So the title of this subject is You've Been Given Keys. Now use your keys. I want to just share real quick before I go into any scriptures, a personal illustration, a parent who works and who have children that are of age that can be in the home by themselves after school, don't have to stay at an after school program or anything like that. These parents usually do what they give the kids keys to the house so that they get home before the parents on a normal basis because school used to get out very early. And the parents want the kids to be able to get inside of the home because they know in the home is safety there. That's where they live. That's their safe haven. Glory be to God. It is a place for protection and covering. So they'll give their kids keys. Now, if a parent who have given their kids keys come home from work and find their kids outside of the door of the house, sitting on the porch or on the steps, looking miserable, it's been raining and they're sitting in the rain, or it's been snowing and they're sitting in the snow, or it's been some type of terrible uh, uh, elements of weather that's going on and they're outside the house. And then they they are puzzled because they want to know why is my child sitting outside when they have a mittens or accessibility to get inside the house? They will scratch their head and they will begin to wonder. And I believe the majority, if not all of them, the next question out of their mouth will be, why aren't you in the house? What happened to your keys? Do you not have your keys? They want to answer why, because they want to know why are you subjecting yourself to the rain? Why are you subjecting yourself to being out here in the cold? Why are you subjecting yourself to say you're hungry and all you got to do is walk through the door and go in the refrigerator and get you something to eat? Why are you sitting on concrete steps and there's a bed inside? That would be a foolish child to have keys and nothing is wrong and they just decide to do that. The parent will begin to wonder, and then they will want to know, why didn't you use the keys to go inside, like I told you to, to be protected from the elements of the weather, to be protected from strangers, to be protected from harm and danger? Why didn't you just go use your keys and go inside? You've got a right to. And so I cannot imagine what a good answer that child would be able to give that parent that would be sufficient. So the only acceptable answer that I can see a parent accepting for the child not using those keys is that the child says, there seems to be something strange about going inside. There was something I saw, or I believe that there's danger if I go, I went inside the house. And then the parents probably could see that. But then they don't expect them to be sitting on the porch if they think somebody inside the house. But anyway, I could see that only being that something inside of the house would be more detrimental to them than staying outside until the parents get home, if you will. So I said that to say this, that the Lord God, our Father, has given us, as we just said, keys, keys of the kingdom, not to the kingdom, but we have access to bind and to lose, 
And we talked about that in detail. Go back and listen at that. We know there are many people today. There are some uh, biblical schools, teachers, pastors, professors, and every theologians who say that that scripture of binding and loosing don't mean that we have that ability or the power what to bind things from happening or to lose things that should happen. I beg to differ. That's just my privilege to believe it like the word say and I'm not doing it because you know Pastor Betty always say I'm not trying to give you all opinion I try to give you the word based off of the word of God that I read I see that we have this ability and I hopefully at the conclusion of this we could go through some of those scriptures to uh, settle that I'm not trying to convince you to, and change your mind, but to give you the truth and let you make up your own mind. But he says, we are to bind. I give unto you, Peter, the keys of the kingdom, that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So God, the Lord Jesus, didn't just give those keys to Peter, as we said, like so he given it to us. What are we doing with these keys? Are we unlocking things? Are we unlocked? Or are we unlocking uh, answers that should be in the earth? Glory be to God. Are we unlocking, hallelujah, strategies to these problems that exist in our world? Because if the church can't do it, y'all, who can? Who can do it if the church can't do it? Come on, somebody. So I can imagine how it makes the father to feel that I gave them all these tools necessary. It's right at their fingertips. And half of them are not using uh, a, 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 a fraction of what I gave them. Matter of fact, half of them ain't new, lose. Half of them are not using even their full potential. They're using just a fraction to the point that most of us probably leave this earth without even coming close to tapping into the full potential that God given us as being in the God class. Even the world seems to be working their works. And it's, it's one scripture says the, the children of uh, darkness is wiser than the children of light. How can that be? If you got the light, if you see the light, if you see the truth, how can they be wiser than us? You know where, why? Because they take whatever they're doing, whether it's good or bad, whether it's right or wrong, and they work that thing. If it's wrong, they're going to work that wrong until it is to their benefit. And they will stay up, they will study, they will research, they will do this. And we just sitting there thinking that God's supposed to do everything, twirling our thumb. Faith, you all, without works is dead being alone. Yes, faith is critical and you got to have it. You couldn't be saved without it. You got to build on that faith. You got to develop that faith. As I always say, I call it the faith gym. You, you got to stay in that faith gym because when you have faith for this, there's something else coming up that's going to try to make you forget that faith works. So you got to go back in that gym and pump that iron so that those muscles can become strong so that we can exercise faith because things come to shake your faith, to make your faith wavering. So what am I saying? But they put in the work. When I look at some of the Come on, Holy Spirit, help me to get through most of it. When I look at these reality shows, these singing shows, these talent shows, and these all of these things, and these, these gifts and talents that people have that looks like any human, people can bend and contort their bodies in ways that don't seem possible that a human can do. They, these people who sings and we ooh and I and desire their lifestyle, but we don't understand the work that goes into what they do to be that to be that best. We don't understand some of the, they ask them, how long have you been doing this? Since I was two and they now 10, but they perfect that gift. They perfect that talent and they are sitting on huge stays and in big audiences. Why? Because their talent have drawn people to them have set a stage and a platform from them. And we ooh and ah said, oh, they had favor and privilege. No, they didn't have no more favor and privilege than you. And the world should not be flourishing, thriving, and the church is just striving because we got, and, and we got like that child sitting on the step, like he ain't got no 
uh, good parents. And, and we've been already given the keys. And not just giving the keys, but being given mysteries. We don't go over some of the things we've been given. Are you using them though? These don't do no good for me just sitting here holding them like this. This could be going to a safety deposit box or something. And that nothing I can get access to and it won't do me any good if I just hold these like this and sit here and say, but this guy, this is key to that. But I got to take this key if I want what's in that behind that door. If I want what's in that box, I got to take this key and I got to use it and I got to unlock it, turn it, unlock it, knowing by faith that if, if I turn it, that it's going to make those gears in there move in the direction it's supposed to do to open to me. And what are we not using our keys? Speak to it today. Say, door open for me. I am tired of dealing with this. I've been here long enough. I've been knocking on the door and people been saying no. I've been knocking on the door and I've been accepting that no. And God has told me the door was open, but because I heard a no, that no made me so discouraged because I had faith to believe what God says. But he didn't tell you one going to get a no. He said, it's yours. Now go take possession of it. It would, it's a disservice for God to give us the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power, that explosive power in our lives. He, then he didn't stop there. The, the blood of Jesus gives us our authority here in this earth and it covers us. It uh, validates us. It gives us our covenant rights. It makes us be seen through the right eye, through the, uh, through the eyes and the lenses of our father through the son. He has given us heavenly places. I'm going ahead of myself. But then we don't, we're not doing nothing with it. And then he didn't stop there. So we got the blood of Jesus to cover us, give us our authority here in this earth that made us heirs and joint heirs of God, put us in the right standing with God. Now we can be called his sons and daughters. Then he gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell on inside us, lead, teach, and guide us into all truth. He is our rear guard, guarding our backs, watching us, hallelujah, leading us into revelations. He is the revealer of the mysteries. He is our GPS system. And then he didn't stop there. Then he also gave us the ministering uh, of the, the ministering spirits called angels that does their job. And they're sitting there like those London soldiers and they're standing at attention. And if you don't say nothing, and if you don't decrease some things, and if you don't confess something and open up your mouth to get these doors open, hallelujah, glory be to God. Said, door, you're opening up to me. They're, they're ready for you to command them to do what they need to do so that they could go and make the path smooth for you. What are we doing? What are we doing? Just sounding so defeated, being defeated, crying all the time. Now, listen, y'all know I love y'all so much. You know that, right? And you know that I do not never negate your pain, your suffering, your tests, your trials, what's hurting, what you don't understand. But you know, Pastor Betty, understand it. But I got to go further as being your, a leader and a spiritual leader and give you the word of God. Because I have to speak to my own self. And so I got to give you all and be firm with you and say, it's enough crying. You done cr I done gave you time to cry over it, to brood over it, to not understand. And now it's time for you to do something about it. You got some keys. Now go knock down some doors. <laughs> Glory to God. That's good, Betty. If I have to say so myself. If you got to go knock some doors down in the spirit realm, you know how to do it. Hallelujah. You, you could praise your way and praise your way and knock some doors down. You could confess and knock some doors down. Hallelujah. You could pray and knock, knock, it, knock it out of the park. So our father is a good father. And he wants to even give us, the Bible says, the whole entire kingdom. And it is a disservice and a poor representation of who our parent is, who our father is, when we don't represent him well. When we show to the world that uh, we are a, a child of a king, but we have to beg. We're not taken care of. The Lord don't want nobody taking care of his children. He wants to take care of them. 
because that's he's a good father like that. He don't want nobody taking care of his kids. No good father want another father or another man coming in his house to take care of his kids. No way, no how. Because they know what it would be said about that. Oh, there's a poor daddy to have another man have to come in. He's living there, going to work and doing all that, but another man taking care of his kids. What do that look like? And the Lord don't want no, no substitute because he have done it all. He's prepared everything, you all. He's prepared, prepared everything. Let me read that scripture. I think I read it last week. That he's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Yeah, let me see. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. I'm only giving this as a recap to those who were not uh, here last week. Um, glory to God. That scripture reference is 2 Peter chapter number 1, verses 3 and 4. According as his divine power hath have given unto to us all things come on all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises and we spent time talking about that last time so that's what we want you to know that he's given us all things that pertain to this life and to pertain to those things that are, are godly and in that that ram a godly ram glory be to god so so that's that illustration i hope that shows you and and explain to you how what the father desire is for us to take the tools he given us and though and more importantly those keys there's nothing like being captive captive and being captive by your own self because some of you have went back into the cage that have, was unlocked for you. And you're putting yourself back into your own prison by not casting down those strongholds of the mind and those imaginations to keep showing you your gloom and doom, showing you your demise, showing you that this is the best that your life is going to ever get, showing you that you will never be healed, showing you that you will never be happy, showing you that you are never possessed. Uh, uh, a home or possess a car, you will never uh, be the one that they promote on your time and the list go on. And when you see yourself that way, you can never have what you can't see. You got to see it first. You got to believe it till you see it in the spirit realm and then it can manifest. Glory be to God. So, um, so why don't we take uh, what God has given us and use what we can uh, he has given us. So I have relief, Father. I want the world to know how good he's been. I tell him all the time, I said, Daddy, I am the apple of your eye. I love you so much right now. Father, I cannot understand what you're doing, Lord. I really don't. I'm being honest. I said, Lord, I don't know the way that you're going, but I am convinced 100 or 200 percent in your word and in your love for me and that you will never hurt me you will never cause anything to bring me uh so much pain without working it all together you will never have me be defeated because your words have more than a conqueror you will never let me, the devil walk up and down on me and i will be beneath his feet because you said that i'm the head in deuteronomy 28 and not to tell i'm above only and i'm never ever ever beneath lord i don't know what you're doing but i ask only that holy spirit give me the patience to wait on my answer because i know that that answer is coming and that the father already got it in store he already got in line what i need in order for me to get to his expected end for me and i know his end for me is a good one because he did it way back in the garden even before adam said he put enmity between satan and 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 eve seed he he put that there and said i'm gonna have her seed bruise your head so Satan is supposed to be under your feet. You're supposed to bruise his head, but he's going to fight back. He's going to try to bite your heel too. 
but that poison won't work. You'll be just like Paul, that 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 uh, um that uh, venomous serpent latched on to Paul after they got to that island. And at first, the people who was condemning Paul, that something he must have done something wrong or got an evil spirit in him, that su such a thing would attach to him. But then when the thing, uh, uh, he just shook the thing off and it didn't cause him no harm, then the same people who condemned Paul was then back trying to bow down to him as a god. Oh, I love the word. I love it. I love it. So the get in, involved and put, uh, into the loving arms of the Father and understand what the Father really wants for you. I'm going to turn your attention to John. John chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. John 7, verses 7 through 11. I just want to talk to you. I've been in that mode. Holy Spirit got me in this mode of uh, intimate talking time with you all is is through this vehicle called Sunday morning service and a and a sermon. But I don't want y'all to view it as me lecturing you. I want you to view it as your spiritual mom is sitting here uh pleading her cause with you, trying to get you to see that the best for you is right there. And I want you to open up your eyes to see what is right in front of you that you haven't been seeing so that you won't stay defeated long spans of time, that you will see the tricks of the enemy and his devices. And then you will get these principles of how to deal when you deal with your heart times. Because see, it's easy to love God, to shout and to dance and love people when everything's going hunky-dory and all right. It's during the times of test and trial where we have lost. I have never seen people turn against God. This one thing called death get the best of the Christian believers to after even 30 years of knowing God, trusting God, testifying to others about God, got people saved by their testimony and, and, and their life. And now because some death has happened in their family, they totally turned their backs on God because if God loved me, he wouldn't have took my husband. He wouldn't have took my wife. He wouldn't have took my mother. He wouldn't have took my father. He wouldn't have took my child. God didn't take him. The devil did. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You said, well, God allowed it. But but guess what? What you don't know is, is that they are in a better place. I know we miss them. It's our life that is missing something, the reason we get so angry. But you allow that devil to talk to you and, uh, and to turn your back on the only thing, the only thing that can heal your broken heart. That type of brokenness, that type of difficulty, that type of of trouble in your life can nothing heal that heart but God. And then the devil will tell you to walk away from the only one that can heal you. And then you die lonely and miserable and angry with God. And then you have missed eternity. And then you face the devil that made you miss God. I don't know why that went there, but God knows. But anyway, John 7, uh, verse 7 through 13. Ask Ask people of God. You got the keys. We know some doors have been bombarded to try to keep us out. And they say, y'all ain't getting in here. Y'all Christ believe you ain't getting a hold of this. You ain't get a hold of this information. You, we ain't gonna allow y'all to do this. Well, if God opened that door, they can't do nothing. So what I'm saying, ask what you want. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock on that door. Come on. Knock, but and it shall be open unto you. Some of you ain't even doing the simple things of knocking. You don't even need the keys. You don't even need no keys in this situation. All you got to do is knock, ask it of the Lord, and then he's giving you the open door, so he's opened it for you. Now, we know these keys were spiritual keys in Matthew 16, what it was talking about, but y'all take the journey with me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He's given us other keys of access to things that we're supposed to have. Come on, somebody. So for every one that asks, receives. Now, why are people trying to add something to it? It says exactly what it means. There's no interpretation needed. Pastor Bear don't even have to preach it and give y'all understanding of this. 
This says what it means and means what it says. No, verse seven, ask, it will be given. Seek, you're going to find. Knock, and it shall be opened. For everyone that asks, receive. He that seek, finds. And he that knock, it shall be opened. Here's the problem, what I said. We don't want to do no work. We just want it to automatically and magically happen. Faith without works is dead. If you knock on the door, then go back and, and wait and let the door open. But you heard the person say, what do you want? No, I'm not open the door. But you knocked on it. The Lord said it's going to be open. Can I get that loan? No. Well, he said it's going to be open. So you do you go back home and brood over it, cry, moan and groan, murmur and complain? He never got nobody anyway. Because when you murmur and complain, that means you don't believe. But, but you say, okay, come back tomorrow. See you later. Because he said it's going to be open to you. Or what man is there of you when, if his son asks bread, will you give him a stone? Which one of you fathers, if your precious son come and ask you, say, Daddy, I'm hungry, you go and find a rock and give it to him and say, hey, here, eat this. That's not a good father. Or if your son asks a fish of you, how many are you going to give him a snake? None of you. If you've got your right man and you're a good father, you ain't going to do that. So he said, if you then being evil, don't mean like being evil. That means if you being carnal and the natural man know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, come on somebody, shall your father, we talking about the heavenly father, which is in heaven. So you won't be confused because he, he told you which father we're talking about, not your earthly father, your father who is in heaven. How much more will he give? How much? What kind of things? Bad things? What is that? Good things to them that ask him. See, when we read these scriptures about ask, receive, we always relate it to natural, materialistic stuff. Listen, you can have the best of car. You can live in the best neighborhood. You can have a mansion, a pool, and everything your heart's desire, and have all that stuff that costs lots of money, clothes to change five times and six times a day shoe that goes from the ceiling to the floor and you can have everything that you want glory be to god but if your health ain't good you ain't gonna enjoy that you ain't gonna enjoy it so i'm what am i saying to you it's not only the materialistic things that we're talking about here because that's all it seems i'm gonna say seem it seems that the majority and the masses only get excited about god when you're preaching a sermon or when they're at church, when you start talking about God's going to bless you with a car. Oh, you gave this amount of money. You're about to get your house. You're about to get the keys to your house. Why can't you believe for the keys to the house before uh, before that? Before, Because it's already yours. According to Matthews, if you seek first the kingdom, it's got to be yours. But we are seeking God's hand and not his heart. We're seeking for what he can do for us, materialistic speaking. None of that is wrong. All of that is yours already by heritage. It's already given. He already stated that it is. But you've got to seek the kingdom because in the kingdom and where your treasures is, that's where your car, that's where your home and all that stuff is at. Some of y'all just pay y'all tithes and offers and stop being selfish. Some of this stuff come to you, but anyway. Help somebody else and then you get out. But anyway, so, but I wanted to read this to show you. He's saying if natural fathers, good fathers know how to do these good things for their children, how much more? Remember, we said we can't even compare ourselves to God. How much more in deep down in depth does God love us that he would give us good things if we ask him? He wants to reward uh, obedient good children. Come on, somebody. So, um, and let's go ahead and read. Um, uh, I want to read that in Amplified Version. So it said, ask, but this Amplified said, keep on asking, because some of us are asked once and then we done. And they said, no, that's it. <laughs> that door, that, that door ain't opening. And you, you said you got the keys. 
you get discouraged and you ain't going back to try it again. You just had to keep turned upside down. You turn it right side up. Keep on flipping it in there. They said that's the key and it's supposed to fit. Don't give up at the first try. Come on. But Amplify said, keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking reverentially and the door will be open to you for everyone who keeps on asking receives and he who keeps on seeking finds and to him who keeps on knocking the door will be open. So I said earlier that I want to share a little bit about uh, of my story and I'm trying to make a connection with the lesson. So in, in my years of being in the church, I have attended many church services. I have gone to uh, numerous uh, classes, workshops, seminars, and you name it, conferences. And, and I've heard the word of God preached over the pulpit. There's been influential um, popular, if you will, uh, personalities that has been invited to be keynote speakers and they've come with their skills, talents, and expertise and their knowledge base and they get over the mic, some saved and unsaved, and they share with us their knowledge. They try to encourage us that if it can happen for them, it can happen for us. And they give the ones who are believers and and are preaching the word, they give to us scriptures about uh, things that are possible for us. They have talked from everything about vision and purpose uh, to capabilities in Christ, et cetera, et cetera, telling us about what God wants to do. And I remember uh, underneath uh, not just my current men of God, but many um, uh, spiritual fathers preaching about uh, God's blessing and that sometimes throughout the year, they would give a prophetic word that God said, if you do this in seven days, this is going to happen for you. And then basically uh, a lot of them at the end of the year, uh, give the word, uh, you know, they get their faith word for the beginning of the new year and that new year's new year Eve service. They'll give you that faith word for you to, uh, connect your faith with for that year to believe God for what they have gotten from God because I give the faith for it as well. And all that's good. So that's not the point. But but so there came a time that I was sitting in a conference and had been going for years, 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 and something in my spirit was not happy or settled. And it was because I sat there and what was being said was so phenomenal and awesome. And I started looking at the notes that I was writing. Some notes that I came home immediately and looked at those notes and uh, meditated and mused it. But quickly, um, those notes were not reviewed again. But I do remember those things being in my mind. And uh, I have a bookshelf behind me and at those conferences and workshops from these people who wrote the books because they share only a little bit because they only had certain time. I said, if I get the book, I could get all the information and hear the whole conclusion of the matter. And each speaker, I begin, I love books. And so, uh, but I'm not what you consider an avid reader like I desire to be, like I desire to be. So, but I will buy the books in intentions of reading the books and getting uh, key nuggets to add to what I know because we don't all, we don't know it all and to get the revelation from what the speaker or the author is saying and then see how it applies to my life. And so I did this with the conferences and everything. I would, I always went to church with my Bible, with my paper, et cetera. That's another story today. But anyway, so I um, was sitting one day in the service and I heard for like, I think maybe the third year in the row that by the end of the year, 
God is, you are going to be debt free. And sometimes they even provoke you to give a certain amount of offering to seal that, if you will. And now just go with me. I'm not going to go deep into none of that. And, and there has been many times that I've participated in giving a, a, uh, abnormal, I ain't gonna say abnormal, but kind of large sum of money based off of that uh, word that was given uh, by my spiritual leaders or whoever it was, believing already before that, that God is going to provide because I'm a tither. But anyway, make a long story short. So I kept hearing this uh, about vision, about purpose, about uh, growing and all these things happening and opening up in our lives. I I heard about this debt-free thing, but I wasn't debt-free. Matter of fact, it looked like I kept, um, for some reason, I was in a season where these jobs wasn't working out. So I was to cause the economic downturns and all those kinds of things. But anyway, I remember one time sitting there and I I was in the midst, everybody was shouting and dancing. I was too until the Holy Spirit quieted me. And I sat there and I kind of zoned out from everyone. And I was in a space where I was excited about the word that was coming. I was believing in what the word was saying, but something was void in me. And I said to myself, I am not going to keep coming, hearing the same word, because evidently if the word keeps coming, somebody ain't getting it. And possibly I'm not getting it because what they're saying is not manifested. I did what they said did, but it ain't manifested for me. But anyway, I got to the point, I'm like, I'm reading the word. I know what it says, but I, out of obedience, I gave that gift, believing that word to come to pass. And I even quoted it. Oh, I'm debt free in 2003. I'm using that as an example. But anyway, I remember sitting there, leaving, feeling full from the word of God. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm not going to keep doing this. Because Pastor Betty's belief is this. It is dangerous for you to keep hearing sound doctrine and the word. Take it in balance. Don't ever stop because don't use that excuse. Well, I'm not going to listen because then I'm going to be required. But whatever you hear, God is going to require it of you. Whatever knowledge you have, God is going to require it of you. Even those who he said to them that know to do good and you don't do it and you got the knowledge that you're supposed to do good and you don't do it, to them, I'm going to put it on their account as sin. A person could be doing the same thing as sin and what you do, and they would not, it would not be put on their record. Why? Because they don't know any better. They don't know. So when you hear the word and the more words you hear and the more sound doctrine you hear, you are accountable of what you do with that word. That's why he said, uh, be a doer of the word and not a hearer own. So I felt like I'm hearing this year in and year out, and it's not manifest. I done followed the formula that they say in the work, and it ain't work. I already knew, in in fact, when I'm telling y'all that it it was already going to be done. I needed to wait, but it wasn't happening. And I felt like it was too many years that that fruit of being debt free and me confessing it and believing it in the level that I, I was really truly believing it that it wasn't coming to pass. So it was a key that I was missing. So when I said to the Lord, I'm not keep doing this. If I'm going to hear this word and they're going to preach it, and I believe that they are uh, true uh, prophet men and women of God, then I want to see some manifestation of what they're saying. I want to be debt free because I hate bills. I just hate them, hate them, hate them. But anyway, make a long story short. I'm gonna go back to today. 
I am debt free and have been for a couple of years. But let me tell you something. It just wasn't about me. The, the key to unlock that door that he gave me was that, yes, you're believing. Yes, you're waiting on it, but you ain't doing nothing. Your faith without any corresponding action of works is, is dead. You got to do something in line with what you're believing so that you become debt free. If you asking and say, I'm, a, I'm believing God for a job and you ain't getting up in the morning, you ain't looked for a job, you don't go out to knock on doors, you ain't looked in the papers, you ain't looking on the job board sites, but you, you believe in God for a job, it ain't happening. If you believe him for a certain job, then you're supposed to be looking for that job that meets those criteria that you ask for and believe him for. It ain't going to happen. He ain't going to drop it in your lap. So the key that he told me, he said, you, you got the giving part that you got it right. You got the word and you believe in that. But now you need a strategy. Debt-free status don't come only by you just believing. Now, y'all, I know it's going to be some people, hallelujah, that preach differently and they're going to disagree with me. That's okay. I I, I understand when I preach, there's going to be people disagree. But it don't come like that. What God does is download, remember we talked about understanding the mysteries. He gives you revelation knowledge that will override the normal processes. He will give, that will give you favor in the midst of favors not being extended in that area. He will give you how to do this. And the same results will happen. You will become debt free. And that was the key that I was missing. So I gave the, the offering. I, I, I believed him to bless that seed for a harvest. Because if you sow a seed, it'll, it'll always bring you a harvest. No doubt about it. It's a law, a predictable consequence of an act. It can never act differently. Just like gravity can never act different. It's a law that happens predictably over and over again. And so the same way with seed time and harvest, it's going to always have, you put a seed in the ground, the soil, God made it to grow seed. Okay. And so he gave me a strategy of how to do what I needed to do to get that free. And it happened. But it came out of getting that key to get that door unlocked. I had to go all the way and get all the tools. And so what am I saying to you? That's what we need to do today. Let me continue so that I can get a chance to wrap this up. I know I feel like I've been with you all alone. And I prom I'm, I've been trying to get to the point where I am being consistent with keeping you all so long. But anyway, so that was my introduction. And why did I bring that up? Because we want to talk about the power that you've been given through that vehicle of keys. It's not going to do any good with those keys laying on those, those, that table. It's not going to do you any good just jingling them, saying, look what I got, keys, keys, keys. If you, if these, let's say these were keys to my car and I need to go somewhere, th that car ain't going anywhere until I take these keys, put them in the ignition, turn it, put my feet on the pedal and go. God ain't going to pick me up by my collar take the keys, put them in my hand and make me put them in. It ain't happening, y'all. Y'all, I think y'all get the point. But what am I saying? God has given us these keys of the kingdom. We got to be dominating in our spirit realm and in the spirit part of us, in the spirit world, just as we are putting so much effort in being successful and dominating in our natural lives because it's dealing with us amassing wealth and having materialistic stuff. It's more to it than that, you child of God, you. You got three parts of you, three parts to man, body, soul, and spirit. And sadly, we spend a lot of time on soul, the soulish part and on the body part. We, we'll get up early, pump iron, walk, do whatever it is to make this body look good. We'll spend hours getting getting our hair done, getting the nails done. 
we'll spend hours shopping to make sure we got the right clothes on the popular clothes, the 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 clothes that are expensive. We do all of that, but in the spirit realm, we don't want to spend time, but we want access to stuff. We want access to stuff that goes beyond the norm, that goes beyond the natural, and enter you into a realm of the supernatural, that goes beyond the ordinary and takes you to a whole plane where a lot of people ain't at and gets you to operate in the extraordinary. But we want to, to uh, spend little time there. We want to diminish our time in the spirit realm and escalate it here and, and give it giving it to the man more than we're giving it to God. And it's wopsided. It's opposite. It's like they said, putting the carriage before the horse. And it's time for us to get these principles understand, and that's what I'm here to do because you've got some keys to some uh to unlock some doors that got some valuable stuff behind it. And I'm not just talking naturally, so that's included. But I'm talking about if you get it told us to seek out the wisdom, call wisdom your sister. Wisdom is more far precious than ruby and most call more costly than gold. If you get wisdom, in wisdom is your gold, your silver, your home, your house, and you name it. But we speak in the wrong thing. We're trying to unlock a door that that key that God gave you, it doesn't fit the natural door. If it's fitting into that spiritual door that he wants you to walk into. And so we can be beneficiaries of third John 2. I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul. He wants both your soul and the natural man of you to prosper. Hallelujah. So that so that if your soul don't prosper, then you may not act right getting all that stuff naturally. But if he knows if your soul prosper, you're gonna do what's right by the natural stuff. You ain't gonna let it own you, you'll own it. You you know what I mean. So anyway, I'm going to give you all a few scriptures and we're going to go into part three next week. I know this is blessing someone. Y'all got some keys. They right there in your possession right now. Go look in your pocketbook, as we used to call it. Men, go look in your wallets. Go look in your jeans and see what keys that you, where did this key from? And you go, go through all of y'all natural keys today and see if y'all got some unused keys. You done been changed them lots and they don't go to nothing. I had to do that. Jingle, jingle, jingle. And they were starting to get heavy. I said, what is this key going to? I, I went through all of them to see if they was any useful anymore. But it ain't no use at the door. The lock ain't there anymore or the, or, or, or the place ain't there anymore. Or they changed the locks. Hey, they ain't going to do no good. And if they not useful anymore, get rid of them. And get the keys to open the stuff to the things you need. And so we need to go key inspection. Use your keys. Use your keys, child of God. Use your keys. You've been given them. Use them. Don't all this complaining and moaning and groaning. Use the keys he gave you. I'm talking to me too. I'm not talking at y'all. I'm talking with you. The reason I give such passion is uh, sermons because I've been there, either been there, done that, or I recently experienced that. And I have to give it out of my heart and from a place where I can give it to you so that you could come out and do it. And I'm not saying you're not there. I'm saying all of us got room up for improvement. Amen and amen. Genesis 126 is a very familiar passage of scripture. And God has said, let us make man into our image and let us have dominion. That's all I'm going to say on that. Okay. So John 1 and 12, I think I gave this to you all last week, but if not, um, if I did, it's okay to repeat it. John 1 and 12 says, but as many as receive him to them, gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. All I'm trying to show you is, is that you are a son of God, you are a child of God, and and being a child of the sovereign Lord, being the child of God who the God who owns everything, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and everything that dwells therein, anything that is made of any resources that exist in this earth, it belongs to us because it belongs to our Father and He's our Daddy. And so, why are we begging for? Why are you flustered? 
and you yourself and buy a house or car and all that. Car ain't nothing but a bunch of metal put together with a bunch of, of, of trinkets. And man put it together. If it's made of steel, if it's made of wood, if it's made uh, from the dust of the earth, if it's made from any resources that God put in his green earth, he said the earth is the Lord, it belongs to him. And if it belongs to him, he gave who the dominion of the earth? Us. The terra firma earth. He gave it to us. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And 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 then this worldly system is gonna get in, it's supposed to be in the hands of the of the saints. But anyway, I'm right. going to so what am I saying to you? It is his. He gave you of the right and the privilege to have it. And it's only to those who are the sons of God. We have been given this wonderful, profound heritage. And why are we not going and taking ownership of it? Because taking uh, taking keys to open stuff is taking ownership of those keys. And we all wait. We talked also about keys being given to you by somebody else who may not be a relative of yours. Like somebody give you keys to uh, the office that you work. And why? Because you are in a position of, of authority and you've been given the right to give keys to open some things. Now, all employees have keys to get to the job especially now during the pandemic and remote and you go in once a week, you got your little thing, you beep, beep, beep to get in. Why? Because it's saying that you have a right to be there. Why? Because you are an employee, hallelujah, you're a beneficiary of that company and you have a right to be on the premises. Anybody who don't have the right to be on the premises don't have a key to get into that place. And then they give people like a manager status or a VP status. They give them special privilege to doors that employees don't have. Do you get my drift? So I'm saying that we have keys. The, the Lord is good to all people and he reigns on the just as well as unjust, but they don't have the covenant rights that we have. They are not offsprings of his. So I want you to see this scripture so that you may know who you are. I think that's what's wrong. We really don't know. We really don't know. And so as many as received him, have you received Christ in your life? Have you made him Lord of your life? Then you are a child of his. And you have received the power to be the sons of God. He has given you that authority, that privilege, that right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. And that name being Father God. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has who have blessed us. Come on, say he has already blessed us with all, with all spiritual blessing in what places? Heavenly places. See, if we are supposed to be in heavenly places, that's talking about a whole new level. That's talking about a whole new dimension and realm. Come on. I'm talking about it says in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, we go there. We get the keys and the accessibility to realms in the spirit that even some Christians ain't at the same levels. It, it's how you avail yourself. Even though they got the right, they don't know how to get there. They have not understood how to take and utilize those keys. But there are some who is attentive, they're listening. They want to know, how do I go to the next level, Lord? And he's teaching them. He's un unveiling these mysteries to them of how to do it, giving them strategies, giving them witty inventions, giving them ideas, uh, insights, and concepts that that kind of Christian who ain't, ain't tapping in don't have right now. He, he can. It's, an, it's available to him. But the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, he is able to, he's able to, he has the capability to make all grace abound toward you so that you have all sufficiency in all things can abound to every good work. But if you read up, it's to the one who so bountifully, you understand? So I'm saying the keys to certain levels, to certain doors is not granted to everybody at the same time because they're not at the same level. Some people just can't be trusted with certain things behind the door. You know the uh, game show you said, let's make a deal. And they said, do you want to change what you just saw for what's behind curtain number two or three? <clears throat> Sometimes people would 
go back and forth and then they would make the wrong decision and you open and whatever they had of value they lose is for a little uh, bonker behind like a goat that was behind one of two. So you got to be in tune. You got to know, know the value of what you got. You got to want to know. You got to want to go to another level instead of going down and going backwards. We need to be accelerating and going forward, not going backwards. Okay, so it says he has blessed, blessed be God, our father of our Lord Jesus, who hath blessed us with all, all spiritual blessings. See, it's talking about the spirit realm, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And so, um, and that spiritual blessing in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. And God has blessed us with that. Isn't it wonderful? Hallelujah. And that is given unto us by the Holy Spirit to get us to that realm of uh, to be where, to be in Christ Jesus, to enjoy these benefits, to be given that access. The final access, you all, is when we leave this place and get to have everybody knocking on heaven's gate door, they ain't getting in. Come on, y'all. And it says, um, then Ephesians, I think I'll end with this. Yes, I think I'll end with this. Um, Ephesians chapter number, let's see how much more I got. Oh, I got a lot to go, but I'm just going to end with this one. Ephesians chapter two, five through seven. I know, do y'all get what Pastor Betty is saying, don't you? I want y'all to get your stuff. I want to see y'all happy. I do. I don't see y'all. I'm just saying in the spirit realm. I want to see God's people happy. I don't want to see God's people continue to be manipulated by the devil and by people. Y'all stop believing everything they telling y'all. Stop jumping on board of all these uh, get rich quick schemes. I am so tired of everybody got a master class. Click this link. To, to take part of my master class. If all of those people who talk about their master class and how much money they make it, we'll have a, a, a better economy and all of that. They ain't making all that. They are trying to lure you in and y'all biting it hook, line, and sinker. Everybody wants to say now, oh, click on this link before they take this down because this industry, the medical industry, don't want you to know that we have found this this miracle cure to this, this, and that. And, and it's only, we, we got so many uh, unique ingredients in it that it's not going to last and it's only available for a certain time. And then you go look years later and this day still on there. And they say, well, you can't get it on no other website but here. And then you go on Amazon and there it is. Then they, they tell you about, oh, invest in this. Give us your money. And this is going to do well. This rate of return on this investment is going to do, 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 do. And you ain't did your research. You ain't asked no professional. You just going on a whim because you want everything quick and microwave. I know I'm being kind of a little harsh here, but this is the Holy Spirit. None of this is on my paper. But we got to wake up, people of God. You got to take your keys unlock wisdom because we are in an age of deception and if you don't tap into discernment and wisdom you're going to find yourself poor beggarly and in a bad way and if you tune into the holy spirit tap into him and 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 ask him and give him the permission to lead you say if you leave me I, i'll follow some of y'all trying to lead and then tell the Holy Spirit to come on along with you because he never leaves you nor forsake you. And I can see sometimes the Holy Spirit says, mm, 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 mm. I'm being quiet today. You know how that GPS system talked to you when you turned it on and you say, I don't know how to get here. And then they said, okay, at the next uh, 1,000 feet, turn right. And then you said, oh, now you kind of getting your little... I think I know where I'm going. And you don't turn right. And she said, recalculating. And first of all, she said real nice. And the second time you disobey her direction, then she said, recalculating, like with a kind of little small attitude. And if you keep on 
uh, going and don't follow that GPS system, it looks like they got a pro programmed it that it start getting their their the inflection of its its voice a machine recalculating like she gets mad. <laughs> and you like well until it start in annoying you and you turn it off. But what what I believe they they program the software that way to say if you're gonna keep on ignoring the direction, why you got the thing on? Why you got me on? Why are you asking me to direct you and you're just going to do your own thing? And I'm saying that's how the Holy Spirit is. He's our GPS, God pointing system. And he points us like a map. And that map is the word of God telling us what to do. When we get uncertain about something, don't know for sure about something, all we got to do is bend those knees. You only got to bend your knees now because some of us can't get down there. But all you got to do is close those eyes and pray in the spirit and ask the Holy Spirit and tell, let him know what God has said, that he is our one that will bring all things to our remembrance and will lead us into all truth and, 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 and help us to understand all things. Holy Spirit, you know what needs to be done. You see the fine lines that I don't understand when I read it, but Holy Spirit, is this the right deal? Is the, is this the time to sign on the line? Is this the time to, to either withdraw my investment or, or to put more into this investment, he will tell you. But we ain't been asked. Oh, glory to God. And uh, he says, even, um, let me see, where was I reading? Oh, glory to God. Uh, I, I was at Ephesians. Let me finish reading this, five through seven. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, we are saved and have raised us up together and made us, you see that? And made us to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace to and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So we'll see at the end how good God has been. But I wanted to focus on that he has quickened us together that me quicken me made us alive together with Christ because we know how we are saved by by grace and have uh raised us up though that's what I wanted to um to point out verse six and he has raised us up together raised us up together with Christ and made us or caused us to uh to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. What a privilege, y'all. Look at the doors that have been opened for us, that we are able to leave this natural realm and go into a heavenly spiritual realm until we are sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And if we are in those heavenly places, we should be getting kingdom keys that comes down and then it, it, it mesmerizes people when they see the knowledge and the wisdom, the understanding, winning inventions flowing out of the, the 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 church, the people of God, the believers, when they see that we have solutions to these hard situations that's facing our world, and they come to the church, and the church will have an answer just like that. That's what's supposed to, I believe, be happening, you all. But we too split, we too divided. We, my church, your church, uh, uh women preaching, men preaching, all kinds of stuff trying to divide the body of Christ while the world is going to hell and while we are not uh, experiencing the best of God that we should be seeing the supernatural and extraordinary happening on a normal basis. So I love you all. I feel that to stop right there, not because I'm done, because I need to finish. Glory be to God. We're going to finish up next week with part three. I want to give us ways that we could tap into getting these keys, making sure we keep our ownership of the keys that God's given us. And when you're faithful over a little, he will then make you rule over much. If you're not faithful of what the little thing he told you to do, if you're not obedient in what the little thing he told you to do, he's not getting ready to put you over much. So if you're ready to be over much, if you're ready to leave uh, levels and go to uh, dimensions, other dimensions, leaving that one dimension, leaving two dimension, and and going to that third or fourth dimension, then you 
You've got to be faithful of what he tells you to do, what he tells you to do, not what people telling you to do, but what he tells you to do. Because only what we do for Christ is going to last. Everybody got an opinion about where you, where you should be uh, spending your time, where you should be spending your money, what you should be doing, what you should be connecting, what you should be thinking. And y'all better get out of that because I'm telling you, people are failing. Uh, every single day, woe to the person, the Bible says, who make flesh's arm, who put your, your trust and your strength in the strength of somebody else's arm. You better put your strength in God's arm. You better look at people, mark the perfect man now, behold those who walk it uprightly. You can have mentors and all that. I'm not saying nothing against that because some um, I'm somebody's mentor or somebody looking up to me as an example. That's Normal is supposed to be, but you better not look at them more than you looking at God. Do not let nobody else train fill the temple when God's train is supposed to fill your temple, when his word is supposed to be your final authority and nobody else's opinion or what they think you should be doing. Because a lot of people think they know what you should be doing. Only God knows and only God will open doors to those who are obedient to him. And there are many of them that he wants to open for the church in this last hour. Why? Because I believe that people believe that the church is going away. The church is losing its influence and it has lost influence and the church ain't looking like it's supposed to. But before it's all said and done, God is coming for the bride of Christ and he's coming for us without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He's coming back for a glorious church. And I believe that there is lots of exploit that the, the Lord wants to work through the church, but he's only going to do it when we mature and grow up. I love you all with the love of Jesus. You remember Pastor Betty tell y'all that all the time, and I so mean it, but God, the Lord loves you so much more. Oh, I wish I could just, I can't even fathom it all, but I wish you all could just see how much he loves you. Stop your crying. Stop your weeping. He even sees your tears. If you are crying and you, and you said, well, that's the place I'm in, Pastor Betty is not condemning you. Cry on, but just talk to daddy as you're crying, because when you talk to the Father, and when you ask the Holy Spirit to minister to you in your weak place, guess what he'll do? He'll come and see about you. Why? Because the word said, in the day that I cried, the Lord answered me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. He knows there are things that get so hard for us in this life, and he don't want us to deal with it alone. The enemy wants you to get off on your loan because he wants to talk to this and get your confidence and your faith in God diminished to the point that you're not just in doubt, but you get to the point that you're, you're not believing. And we know that God can't do anything with unbelief. I love you all, but I want to talk to somebody today who do not know the Lord Jesus, do not know the goodness of this God that I've been talking about, do not understand that, they, that they've been given keys in a realm that is beyond what you physically can see, taste, touch, and feel. But there is a spirit realm that is more real than anything that that's factual or anything that we can see right now. Because all this that we see, y'all, it ain't real. All of this is just a journey that we're passing through. But the realness is that which is in the visible realm. Things that we, that's why you got to have faith. Things that we cannot see like God, our Father, like Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we so most definitely can feel him and, and, and can hear him speaking. We don't even see this air called oxygen that we breathe every day. I can't grab it, see? But it's just as real as Pastor Betty is sitting here. Why? Because if it wasn't real, I wouldn't be talking right now. But everything that is more real is in the invisible realm. But that's what our natural mind have been deprogrammed to understand. We first existed spiritually before we existed naturally. When Adam fell, we put on these little earth suits. That's why we die. And, and these things go back to the dust from which it was made. We did, Adam was glorified. They were glorified. When they fell, they fell into these earth suits. And so it perishes day by day. But I'm telling you that there is a reality of eternity that you must believe. And if you say, I want to be that, I want to do that, I want to understand these keys that's been given to me in this spiritual realm, because I certainly need some doors open. You can't have it open. I told you, according to John 1 and 12, to as many as receive him, 
they are the only ones that can enjoy this inheritance and get access to these keys. And more importantly, the key to heaven to get into eternity, you don't want to miss that. Because see, if I'm wrong, I just live a very good life, but I'm not wrong. But if you wrong and you miss heaven, ain't no redo, ain't no redo. So you said, well, Pastor Betty, how can I uh, receive Christ? I want to give the Lord a try. And I tried everything and it ain't work. I know it ain't working because you ain't happy. You're miserable. You understand you, you see a gloom and doom in this world and that's it. But you could simply say a simple prayer to me and uh, believe it, confess it, and you will be saved. Are you ready to do that? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope men, women, boys and girls everywhere who have listened now, it may be years from now, and I may be long gone into and 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 home to be with the Lord. And this, if if by God's grace He allowed this earth to continue, because if it continue too much longer, I don't know y'all. But if by any chance that I'm gone or I'm here, and you come across this, whenever you come across this and hear this message right now, don't you delay. Glory be to God. And you can say this prayer, Lord be to God, and you can be guaranteed if you say it and believe it, hallelujah, in your heart, then you will be saved and you will meet the Lord in peace. With your hand lifted as an act of surrenderance to his will, uh, uh, relinquishing your will and what you want to do and coming underneath his lordship, knowing that he knows what's best for you because he made you. He's your creator. Hallelujah. And, and also as a hand lifted of acknowledging that what I'm about to say, I believe it. Hallelujah. That dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now in the name of your son, Jesus, admitting that I am a sinner that needs salvation. I thank you, Father, that you gave your son so that I might be saved. Father, I ask you, that I call upon you today asking you to forgive me and to accept me and become the Lord of my life. Today with my mouth, I confess that Jesus is the son of God and that he died for my sins. But on the third day, he was raised from the dead and is now sitting alive at the right hand of the Father, even making intercession for me. Now, Father, by that confession of faith and by my belief in you, according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, that says that if I will confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. And I have just confessed that, Lord. By that confession of faith, I am now sure and confident that I am now saved. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Father, I ask now that you come and live your life in me and through me. Use me as your instrument of good service. Be the Lord of my life for the rest of my life. I ask you to come, fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I may be able to continue to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now I ask you to help me along the way to become acquainted with you better and better each and every day in this brand new way. I believe it and I receive it. And it is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank God so much for you, men of God. Thank God so much for you, woman of God, child of God. Children, if you said that prayer, hallelujah, you are saved. Men and women, if you said that prayer, you are saved right now. Everything that you've done from this moment on, your slate is clean. 
the blood of Jesus has came and washed all of your sins away that was in the past. If any man is in Christ, that's what you just did. You got in Christ. You left the world. Now you're in Christ. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All the old things, the old habits, the character, they're going to be falling off of you. They are passed away from this moment on. And now you become a brand new creature. It's some. It's like someone that will expunge your, your record. Anything you've done wrong from this moment on, now you have a, a new story to write. Glory to God. And now if you leave this earth in the next second, believe that and you I know you confessed it if you didn't open your mouth and say it after me go back rewind because confession is about opening your mouth and speaking it and if you confessed it and believe it guess what you guarantee eternal life you got a whole brand new family now heaven is yours you got your life ahead of you to look for is it going to be free of of troubles and stuff no all Christians and non-Christians alike have troubles, but we have the overcomer on our side. We are on the winner's side, and we know that at the end, we we win. The other ones have the trouble. They don't have nobody to carry that heavy burden. They don't have nobody to encourage them. They don't have the ability to withstand it, and they, they lose at the end, but we go through it. We count it all joy when we fall into direst temptation of Fountain James. Hallelujah, one and five, and and but then, even though we're going through, we can we can keep on fighting when we know we win it. Whatever happens, if the outcome is winning, no matter what happens, you'll persevere and keep on going. So that's what happened. So I want you to reach out to us and let us know that you receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior today on this broadcast. Send us an email at the email that will be coming up momentarily in our announcement, klcc1207 at yahoo.com. And in the subjects that receive Christ, if you want to be a member of the church in the body of the letters that I also want to become a member of this very fine church, Kingdom Life, and we will let you know what you need to do, whether that is a member in person or if you are not in Illinois and you want to become an e-member, you let us know that and we'll give you the tools necessary to do that. Glory be to God. If you're a backslider, you said that prayer with those who just getting saved and you rededicated your life to the Lord. Oh, how my heart is rejoicing over you because look, backsliders, I have a special love for you because the devil wants to use you as his trophy to show to God, look at this one, they left you. And show off, uh-uh, get yourself back. Get I we gave you some keys to, that that the Lord took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And if you want to be free, you don't have to be bound. All you need to do is ask the Lord to help you, and He immediately gave you the keys to come on out of that and start a brand new life. All you got to do is do what these people who just did said this prayer after me, and bam, you just took the first key. To get gain access to your your uh your life now, and your life is just about to start. I love all of you with the love of Jesus. You all be blessed. Have a fantabulous rest of the week. Remember, Pastor Betty, I always tell you all: remember to take time for you. Get you some me time. If it's number five minutes away from everybody and everything, just to reflect on who you are individually, and then relax relate and release spend some time relaxing slow that spirit down relax in the lord that's what sabbath uses is all about entering into the rest of the lord we don't worked all week long this is supposed to be your time to go to the house of the lord reflect rest in in the sabbath and in that is calm peace assurance of who God is, what he's capable of, and what he's done for you. Glory be to God and reflect on the things he's already done. Because if a person can remember where they came from and what God did for them in the past, you can be um, more confident that if he did it for you in the past, he'll certainly do it again uh, for you in the future. For he never changes. There's no shadow of turning. He's the same he, today, yesterday as he was, as he will be, I'm sorry, as he will be forever. And if he did it before, he can do it again. I love you. I'm a pastor who is teaching kingdom principles 
for Kingdom Living. And if you want to join us, come on. The, I have unlocked the door with the key to Kingdom Life Christian Center, and it's open wide open for you. Come on and join us, for we have a place for you. Hallelujah. With this church, we're Kingdom Life. We are destined to make it a place where Jesus Christ is the center focus, not Pastor Betty. And the word of God, not opinion, is the highest authority. God bless each and every one of you. Love you all, my people. Y'all know who y'all are. I bless you. Thank you all for your uh, monetary support as well as your um, support of Pastor Betty and this ministry. I love you. Never will forget you. And to those of you who have any prayer need and you want me to pray for you, all you know, I'm just a little email away. God bless you all and keep your eyes and ears open and be in tune to what the Holy Spirit is saying and 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 aware of where he's leading you. And if he don't lead you, he, if he don't tell you, then don't do it. You all be blessed. And I'll talk to you all this same, same time next week. You all, I am working on this year making, we just been having a lot of difficulties, so I'm not going to bore you to but I'm going to be posting and praying on what is a very good time for our Sunday morning service. We want to reach as many people as possible. So you all pray for Pastor Betty that we make the right decision. And to the Isabel family, I haven't forgotten about you. It came to me today. I will be sending you, hopefully tomorrow, uh, that confession. So as my partner, um, I'm going to be sending it to you via email. Love all of you. You all be blessed now. Talk to you all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Remember that Jesus, he is Lord.